There are very few things that I can say that cause my gra grandmother great fear. In other words, there are very few things that she's afraid of. She's lived through the Nazis, through the Second World War, through communism, through all sorts of things. And so there are very few things that make her be afraid. But one of those things is water. She has a fear of water. She doesn't swim. In fact, I think she probably even prefers sponge baths. <laughs> so afraid is she of water. <laughs> you could not get her into a swimming pool for anything. But right after I learned how to swim, it was uh, an interesting experience learning how to swim. My grandfather threw me into a pool of water and said, move your arms and your legs. And that's how I learned how to swim. But right after that happened, we went to a neighboring town where there was a sort of a pond where everybody swam in. There were no swimming pools. And... Uh, I was in that pond, we call it a staff in Polish, I was in, in that, I was in that pond swimming and my grandfather went off to get a beer and all of a sudden I thought that I was drowning and I was making all sorts of drowning noises, gasping for air. And what did my grandmother do? She jumped into the pond of water. <laughs> now you have to imagine this, because she doesn't wear like pants or anything like that. She wears all of these really big clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and she jumped right in. This was a sight to behold. <laughs> and after we both got out of the water, the one thing that I will remember is her saying these words. I love you. She said these words, I love you. I have come to believe that love is stronger than fear. Something that I don't think very many people believe in the environment that we find ourselves in today. This pandemic environment. We don't believe that love is stronger than fear. Which is why, looking out at all of you, I'm so proud of you because you testify through your presence here that you believe in love. You believe that love is stronger than fear. Every time the angels appear during the Christmas stories, which we will be hearing so often beginning today on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, this whole week we will be hearing of angels appearing. The angels say these words, do not be afraid. They constantly have to say that, whether it is to Mary today. 
Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, which means God loves you. They say it to Joseph in his dream. Do not be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your wife. To the shepherds, what do they hear? Be not afraid. God understands that in this world, there are many things that frighten us. But the angels remind us today. You all have your own angel, but you don't listen to him. You listen instead to the voices around you, your television, your news station. You listen to all those voices around you. That's why you're afraid. I think you should listen to your angel more often. Maybe you don't even believe that you have an angel. I used to say the guardian angel prayer when I was a kid, and I say it to this very day. Oh, angel of God, I think I say it in Polish. Aniele Boże stróżu mój, ty zawsze przy mnie stój. Rano, w wieczór, we dnie, w nocy, zawsze stój mi ku pomocy. Strzeż duszy ciała mego, zaprowadź mnie do żywota wiecznego. Amen. You don't say that, do you? It's that angel of God prayer. I was taught that by who? My grandmother, she taught me that. Aniele Boże, stróżu mój, ty zawsze przy mnie stój. I say that every day. Angel of God, I think in English it's oh, angel of God, my guardian, dear. I can't, I don't know the whole thing. In, uh, you know, I pray in Polish. That's my language that I pray in because that's how I was taught. Do you say that prayer? Well, if you do, then why are you so afraid? You should ask yourself that question. Maybe you've stopped believing that you have a guardian angel. Have you taught your children that? that they have a guardian angel that's always with them? How many times is that phrase repeated in the Bible? Maybe we should read more of the Bible rather than the New York Times. Huh? How many times is the phrase, do not be afraid, present in the Bible? You know, it's interesting because I was looking at it and I, when I was in the seminary, they taught us that it was 300, that the, that the number of days, the number of times that the phrase do not be afraid appears in the Bible is 365 times that phrase. It's told to Abraham, it's told to every prophet, it's told to every single personality that we meet in the Bible. Paul hears it. Everybody hears it. Do not be afraid. And then I did some research because this is 2020. In 2020, it doesn't happen too often, but 2020 is called one of those leap years, which means that February had how many days in it? 29. You all remember that? This is a very unusual year, isn't it? We'll be glad it's over. <laughs> At least I am. Huh? So, in a leap year, there's how many days? 366. And so I did some research. The actual amount of times that the phrase do not be afraid appear, that appears in the Bible is 366 times. You think God has a message in 2020? I think that phrase was especially poignantly prepared for a year like 2020. Do not be afraid. 
God understands that in this world there are many things that frighten us. But the angels, that same angel that is with you always, that's on your shoulder, is here to remind you what I learned that day in that pond. That love is stronger than fear. Get it? Love is stronger than fear. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. The original Greek here basically says, do not be afraid, Mary, because you are loved by God more than you can ever imagine. God loves you, Mary, with an unimaginable love. You are loved, Mary. And this made Mary bold and unafraid because she knew she was loved. And love is stronger than fear. I have confirmed so many children and young people and adults during this time, one of the gifts of the pandemic is that I uh, have been able to confer the sacrament of confirmation, which I didn't do in all my 11 years of being a priest because the bishop would always come to do that. But during this time, we have permission to confirm. And in one of the lessons to learn that through the sacrament of confirmation, each one of us receives the spirit of fortitude, strength, courage. You don't remember those gifts of the Holy Spirit, do you? We need some Baltimore Catechism reminders here. What, how is it that Mary was going to get through it? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. That same Holy Spirit that came upon us when we were baptized, when we are confirmed, that came upon Mary has been given to us. It is not a spirit of fear, as the Bible says. Do you have a spirit of fear in you? Where does the spirit of fear come from? The devil. Which spirit have you received? Now, you know, there was much that Mary should have been afraid of. I mean, can you imagine this? She will have to explain to her parents, Joachim and Anna, how she got pregnant at 12 years old. At that time, at 12 years old, a girl was already to be married. So we know that Mary was 12 years old. Did you know that? Did you know that Mary was 12 years old? Can you imagine? And at 12 years old, can you imagine her coming home and saying to Joachim, her dad, Dad, I'm pregnant. And Joachim saying, well, as I, I can just imagine, okay. And Joachim says, well, how did this happen? And Mary will say, he was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? How about having to tell Joseph, her promised one, being promised, being, uh, the Bible says, betrothed, that just meant that you are already kind of like married. You understand that? Okay. In biblical times, if you read the Hebrew scriptures, you'd find that out. And there are passages in the Hebrew Scriptures in the Old Testament that say that a woman who is promised to be married, that if she is found to be pregnant, which means she had, you know, hanky-panky, okay, with somebody. You all get that? Or do I have to explain it more? Okay. <laughs> I mean, if... <laughs> If you, she was found like that, she 
by law was to be stoned publicly to death. But we know from historical accounts, especially the historian Josephus, and is an early Jewish historian, that most women who were found like this were not stoned to death. They were publicly burned alive, naked, to shame them, because in that culture, shame is the worst thing that could happen to you. You know that from the Middle East today. If a young girl in the Middle East, like in Iran or in Saudi Arabia or in one of those countries, is found to be pregnant, what happens to her? Her own father kills her publicly. It's true. It's even happened in this country. People from those cultures, that's what they do, because shame is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Shame. So Mary was going to be burned alive, naked, in public to deter others in that culture, supposedly, from falling into that. You get the picture? They would do this publicly to Mary, and Mary knew all of this. She knew the consequences. But Mary loves God. And love is stronger than fear. That's why Mary is the immaculately conceived one, the model of discipleship. We're Catholics. We have Mary as our model. We are very proud to have Mary. Some of you have Mary in your house. I don't know. Sometimes I go to people's houses and I think, you know, there's nothing. Like, they've got everything in their home except a holy picture. You know, I'm trying to give you all the faith of my grandmother here. Very simple faith. She don't read, don't write. But that's, I'm trying to give it all to you, okay? I'm not trying to give you, you know, seminary faith, theology faith. I'm trying to give you a simple faith which will make you bold and unafraid and allow you to get through your day like she has. That's what she gave me and that's what I'm trying to give all of you. And she had her, I mean, I put up pictures from my last visit. Her whole room is like a religious goods store, like one we have here, okay? All right? Do the same thing. Do you have a statue of Mary, a picture of Mary? Is that what you give your kids? What are you going to get them for Christmas? A bunch of trinkets and garbage? Get him something of faith. You have your own rosary hanging in your car. All of those things are so important for us to remind us the faith of Mary. My whole house is plastered with Mary everywhere. I got Mary everywhere. I wake up to Mary and I go to sleep to Mary because she reminds us not to be afraid. You know, shouldn't you be afraid? Maybe afraid of the virus today? And yet you are here because for you, your love of God is stronger than any fear of any virus. Shouldn't you be afraid of confronting your loneliness and your own life situation Shouldn't you be afraid of starting a new job or that new business? Shouldn't you be afraid of confronting your husband about the problems you have in your marriage and facing the need to get help? Shouldn't you be afraid of having one more child, as you should? Because family is the greatest gift. Shouldn't you be afraid of getting help 
for your depression or your anxiety and telling the truth about what happened to you, the abuse you suffered or the neglect or facing your own past? Or shouldn't you be afraid of asking someone for forgiveness or making that phone call to your estranged family member that you haven't talked to? It's the holiday season. Hello? Of course. But we're here. So that means we believe in God. And God is according to the first letter of John in the Bible. Everybody here reads the Bible, I'm sure. I'm just positive. What does the first letter of John say? God is love. So if you believe that God is love, then love is stronger than fear. And for us, we celebrate during this season that love has a name. Jesus. And Jesus is stronger than any fear. Love is stronger than fear. Say that with me today. Love is stronger than fear. Mm. You're going to leave here today and that's going to be implanted on you. Love is stronger than fear. And you're going to think about my grandmother falling into that pond. <laughs> I will never forget that. Her drenched in water. And then those words, I love you. God does the same thing. You know, he, he jumps into our life with his son Jesus in this, the incarnation, God becoming flesh. And he says that through his son Jesus, I love you. Mary trusted that God loves her beyond her own imagining. And so she says, yes. What did she say? Let it be done to me according to your word. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Look at Mary. That's what we have to say in our life. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me. Let me I'm living my life according to your will. Mary goes through her life with fears, doesn't she? She had to give birth in a cave. She had to flee with her baby on a donkey to a foreign land, to Egypt. You think it was easy? You think she wasn't fearful? These things didn't cause her fear? And when Jesus is lost in the temple, come on now, let's think about her life. When Jesus is arrested, when they crucify him. I mean, she was there at the cross. All the apostles left. So much for courage. So much for the guys, you know. The real strong ones are the women. Yeah. You know, who runs the church? Huh? Who runs your house? The woman, huh? You know, a good house is a strong, has a strong woman in there. You know, she calls the, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, the mother is the key to any family, isn't it? I mean, you know, my grandfather pretended that he was so, you know, oh, but the real strong one was my grandma. Huh? <laughs> Mm -hmm. She had a life that wasn't easy, a life with a multitude of fear-producing moments, but she remembered what the angel said. That's why you all have, we all have spiritual amnesia. We have like a spiritual Alzheimer's going on. That's why we've got to come to church. They just came out with a new study that the Catholic News Agency uh, put up that says that the only people during this time 
that have had their rates of anxiety and depression and fear go down are the ones who go to church during this whole time. And yet they're trying to do everything possible for us not to go to church. You could go anywhere. You know, you could go to the casino, to the Walmart with a lot more people, but you can't go to church, you know. No. Oh, no. Only 25 people can be there or seven people. Okay. Go ahead to the casino. Keep punching the buttons. So-called social whatever, you know distancing, okay? I won't get into that because um, I'm getting off topic. I never do that. You all know that, of course. You know, I, I have one page prepared and I end up going two pages, but I'm almost done, okay? <laughs> you have found favor with God. You are loved by God. You are full of grace. God is with you, Mary. What does that mean? You are full of grace. You are full of God. Do you know that? God is with you, Mary. What did the angel tell her? What he's trying to tell you. All will be well. Nothing is impossible for God. This too shall pass. One way or another. At every frightening, fear-producing turn of her life, Mary keeps saying yes to God because love is stronger than fear. So what are you afraid of today, right before Christmas? What's the source of your anxiety? I'm speaking. What is the source of your anxiety? What's stressing you out right now? What keeps you up at night? What are you afraid of? Is there someone in your family who's sick? Is your marriage in trouble? What should I do, Father Adam? So many people ask me. I'm so afraid. Here's the recipe. Don't focus on your fears. Focus on Christ's Spirit in you. The Spirit that is way stronger than any fear. That bold spirit, the spirit of courage and fortitude that is in you. you. In other words, you got what it takes as Mary had what it takes. Focus on that, not on that which is producing your fears. Focus on God. Listen to the angel. Fear not. Fear can rob you of joy. The joy of the Lord in your life. And I invite you to repeat every single day the same thing that my grandma says every day when she wakes up. And she comes into the kitchen. If you've ever been in our house, you know that she has a routine. She comes right into the kitchen and she, the very first thing she says is what I want you to say as well, which is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.